Little Miss Recap contains adult language and is intended for entertainment purposes only. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Little Miss Recap, the podcast where... I just told Christine two minutes before we started, oh, by the way, we're doing this episode completely out of order. <laughs> well, she's like, my notes go by what I'm seeing on my screen. I'm like, oh, yeah, no, no, not happening. We're doing locations this time. <laughs> anyway, my name is Amy Archer. I'm here with backdoor friend Christine. Hi. Hello. Hi. Um, how'd you feel about this episode? Um, I watched it twice. The first mm. time I watched it, it felt um like there was a lot going on. Uh it, it felt like um we're setting up. We're we're setting up for some table setting. For, yeah, for, mm-hmm. for war here. Like now we're really getting to the nitty-gritty. Um it was a good episode overall. Um yeah, I think that's I thought so too. I was really surprised that they didn't have us edging with that conversation at the end so like allison mm-hmm. and renee are having the conversation and mm. i'm screaming ask her what he said <laughs> you know and they're really fucking with us because they do take their time getting to yeah. that part of the conversation but they do have the conversation yeah and i was just like wow how often do we see that where like the itch is just scratched yeah that's that's pretty rare mm-hmm. and um I also thought this episode had some pretty comical moments. Like, and we'll get to that. Like some, okay. n- not overtly comical. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. We did get to see a blowjob, full on. Oof, oh mm-hmm. my God. We got some <laughs> Amond nudity. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I always want to call him Almond. I don't know why. <laughs> and now I feel like his eye is shaped like an almond. <laughs> my grandma always used to tell me that one of my daughters had almond shaped eyes. Uh huh. And she used to say to me, Oh, Amy, please don't let her become a model. Please don't let her become. I'm like, I don't think there's a danger of that, Graham, but what? okay. <laughs> I will stop her from being a supermodel because she would say that Elizabeth Taylor had almond shaped eyes. And so does. Okay. And if you know me and you know what I talk about in the podcast a lot, Elizabeth Taylor mm-hmm. is a cautionary tale in my family. Uh, you have to be careful on horses because you could fall off and become an alcoholic and you can't get wrapped up in a Richard Burton type situation. <laughs> I find her quite inspiring. So I, I love know. her. I'm like, obsessed <laughs> with her and Richard Burton's love story, which tells you everything you need to know about Because I think at one point they were practically stabbing each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so... Um, all right, so let's get into it. We're gonna we're gonna shake things up, guys. We're gonna do this a little differently. Um, Christine's <laughs> along for the ride. We'll figure it out. Oh, what are you doing for the fourth down there in Florida? A uh, pool party. Yeah, I'm renting a slip and slide, like an inflatable one, like one of those giant ones. And, oh. uh, and, and it's gonna go into a pool? No, no, just just out on the grass. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. And we have a pool as well. And we bought some nice fireworks, which I rarely ever do. I almost never mm. buy fireworks. But yeah. this year I decided to go to one of those little fireworks places and buy some really good ones. So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, We've tried fireworks before. We have like a little five acre pond on our property. And mm-hmm. normally, you know, we'll send some people down there to do the fireworks. And it always ends with somebody falling in the pond and their phone getting destroyed. <laughs> Like twice that's happened. So we're just not doing it. We're not doing it this year. Mm-mm. And my dog, um, uh, Arlo, my little border collie, he yeah. hates fireworks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to give him a break. Yeah. But, you know, we'll see. We can see lots of fireworks from our house. But And my sister's coming in. So, you know, she'll be here. Cool. Yeah, we'll probably watch the bear. Do you watch the bear? I do watch the bear. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. love – I Okay. I, I'm going to be honest here. Okay. So far this season, I'm not feeling it. Okay. I'm a not. lot of people are saying that. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. only on the second episode or okay. third. I'm not sure. Episode um, one was a little weird, right? It was a lot. My husband hated it so much. Yeah. He, it's he very is frenetic. very impatient. Yeah. He's very impatient though. He's like, it's flashbacks. It's all flashbacks. I hate flashbacks. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it, it was all flashbacks. But what it was, I think in the end 
yeah. was it was all of the knowledge that he had acquired mm-hmm. through all of his training yeah into the non-negotiables list oh which yeah it's ridiculous yeah. he's crazy he's, he's crazy he's yeah karm is having a full-on meltdown this season <laughs> that's what it is and i'm here for it i'm here here for him i'm here for cousin i'm here for yeah. the facts i don't care yeah. but it's good all right so let's get into this so this Mm -hmm. is house of the dragon season two episode three the burning mill yeah um i have to tell you something i saw Mm. a huge spoiler like i know what happens now okay because somebody's like oh joffrey told us what happens in house of dragons in game of thrones uh-huh. And I watched the reel like an idiot. <laughs> and he tells us exactly what happened. So, guys, if you see that, do not fall for it. <laughs> do not fall for it. Do not click on anything with Joffrey. So let me let me just add something here, though. Um, we can also take it with a grain of salt what's said in Game of Thrones. True. Because Fire and Blood, which is what House of the Dragon is based on, it's a couple of chapters in that book. Um, is written by three or four different people, like maesters and and people who oh. were around at that time. Okay. So it's like a lot of hearsay, right? Okay. It's not necessarily taken, even the way it's written, it's not written like a novel, like this is what happened. No, no, this is what may have happened, right? So, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So that could be... But so again. Joffrey <laughs> could be like getting his information from one source that might right. not be... Oh, okay. Like almost like lore. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Good. That that's good because I wasn't <laughs> wasn't happy with what I learned. All right. So in the opening scene, we have uh, some young Brackens, and yeah. they are being confronted by a gang of Blackwoods, mm-hmm. and they're fighting over boundary stones. They're in the Riverlands, and mm-hmm. it devolves into a turf war and a fight about green versus black. And the Blackwoods are loyal to Rhaenyra, and the Bracken are loyal to Aegon. And Mm -hmm. the standoff then cuts to a battlefield of a ton of dead soldiers. Yeah. It's just miles and miles of bodies. Now, I will tell you, the first thing I said to my husband, and I don't know if you'd get this reference, probably not, is it looks like Uhtred and his gang were there. Because Mm -hmm. in The Last Kingdom, when Uhtred and his buddies would show up to fight, this is what it would look like afterwards. Okay. Just lots of carnage. So did you understand immediately what was going on here? Because it took me a little bit. Um, it was the battle of the burning mill, mm-hmm. uh, but they basically didn't show the battle. They, I, I feel like maybe right. this is like a budget decision <laughs> because there's going to be a, a big war coming. Um, but it's essentially the first battle, um, in of this war. war. Mm-hmm. Wait, I do have to tell you something funny though. So the way mm-hmm. that they filmed it, uh, the Blackwood, no, the Bracken dude had his sword like pointed at the Bra- at the Blackwood. Yeah. And Blackwood's like, go ahead, go ahead. Bet you don't have the <laughs> guts to do it, pussy. Like, you know, pretty much taunting him. Yeah. Cut to that same kid dead. And then you're panning yeah. out. You're sitting, and I'm like, oh, my God, he killed him. And then he's panning out. And I'm like, oh, my God, he killed a bunch of people. He killed everybody. I <laughs> thought this dude went on a wild rampage and, like, killed everybody. And I was like, holy shit. Yeah. It's like Damon and the Stepstones. Just. <laughs> yeah. Just all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's scoot to Team Black. Okay. 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 All right. So we have this scene with Rhaenyra and Jace, and they're talking as they're burying the twins. And Jace wants revenge. Mm -hmm. Uh, But Rhaenyra, Rhaenys, I'm sorry, is there. And she counsels Rhaenyra. And she says, Otto Hightower never would have allowed this to happen, meaning the twins coming Mm -hmm. to assassinate her. She says, hotter blood prevails. Yeah. And then she says, the young men have taken the bit in their teeth to punish and get revenge, and soon they won't even remember what started the war in the first place. And Rhaenyra says, well, they usurped my throne. They love the word usurped yeah. in this world. Mm-hmm. They usurped my throne. And Rhaenys says, that's one answer. Or was it when the child was beheaded? Or when Aemon killed Luke? Right. Or when Luke took Aemon's eye? We teeter now at the point where none of it will matter. I thought this was interesting. Yeah. Because what she's saying essentially is, how far back do we have to get to get to the first wrong? Mm -hmm. Right? Because you could argue 
that Viserys was wrongly named the heir. Correct. That it should have been Rhaenys. Yeah. So, yeah. like, how far back do we have to go? And this is an ongoing theme in this episode, for sure. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. As you see between the Blackwoods. And, I mean, we'll get there. Um, yeah. But the Blackwoods, the Brockens, it's been going on for ages. Um, so what's the original sin, I guess? What, what, what is the original sin? Right. That's the ongoing theme, yeah. And then does that wrong beget another and beget another? Mm -hmm. Like, at some point, it has to stop. It has to stop. Because it's just escalating. Mm-hmm. So um, then Rainey says, you know, eventually the desire to kill and burn will take hold. Thanks. Thanks, uh, cuz, <laughs> for the uplifting speech. <laughs> she says, but what about Alicent Hightower? Like, what if there was another way? And Rhaenyra yeah. says, she said I would make a fine queen and look what she's doing now. Like, right. Okay. And then she says, Alicent did send me a raven, but I've left her on red. <laughs> mm -hmm. She's essentially... I'm not reading that. Fuck you. Yeah. Now, Rainey says, she did come to me in the hours after your father's death. And I think she gets it. Like, she does not seek out this bullshit. It's the men around her. And she's no more responsible for all this shit than you are for Jaharis being beheaded in his crib. Mm hmm And you could see Rhaenyra, like, this is kind of making sense to her. Mm hmm It is so interesting to me and so indicative of life in general that the women have to be the ones to make the peace yeah like you can't count on the men to do this no <laughs> this is this is all on the women's shoulders mm -hmm. all right so later we have this short scene when Rhaenyra meets with Masseria on the balcony Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sea Smoke is being a real dramatic bitch out there in the sky, just being like, ah, ah, like just flying around whining. And I'm like, can somebody just put that dragon in a cage? Like, what is it doing? <laughs> and uh, Mysteria saved the queen's life. Like Rhaenyra acknowledges, you yeah. saved my life. I'm really grateful. And Mysteria wants to serve her. So how would Mysteria serve her, do you think? Would she be? She'd be like the master of whisperers for her, basically. That was my question. Like, does mm -hmm. every house have a master of whisperers? It sounds like um, not every king or queen has one, but they may choose to. And it's helpful for them, of course, like we see later oh, yeah. on with the Greens as well and Laris. Um, so I think that's what she's getting at here. She has a lot of spies in the Red Keep and in King's Landing that can bring information to her that's useful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, she, Miss uh, Ray, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Rhaenyra is like, yeah. what's in it for you? Like, why do you want to serve my house? And Mysteria mm -hmm. rightly says, number one, fuck those high towers. Mm -hmm. Number two one of you is going to end up ruling the small folk. And I feel like you're definitely the better choice. Right. Because I forgot Aegon jerked off all over the city last <laughs> episode or last season. Remember out the, the window? Last season. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh. Uh. So, uh, sea smoke now still causing a lot of drama out there. Just bah, bah out there and uh Masiri's like what the fuck is wrong with that dragon and Rhaenyra says he belonged to my late husband what was his yeah. name was it Lenor? Lenor. Uh -huh. yeah. and uh Masiri says maybe he's grown lonely dun 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 <laughs> he's coming back right um I don't like, know they're talking a lot about him they do talk a lot about him I don't I don't know though that I'm not I, I don't know. Like, what point could he serve coming back at this point? Just that he's he's Corliss's real heir? That he could ride a dragon? That's the only... I just don't see him I don't know back. if he wants to ride Sea Smoke. Sea Smoke's a horny <laughs> bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I like Sea Smoke. <laughs> I do. I enjoy Sea Smoke's energy. <laughs> so later, Rhaenyra calls Reyna in. So now we're seeing Reyna. Yes. Her Bela sister... Damon's child with stepdaughter. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Who is mm -hmm. her mother? The one who incinerated the one herself who's, by dragons. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Reyna? No, she's I can't Raina. remember. I can't remember. <laughs> Whatever. Again, you're not getting facts here. <laughs> so 
she tells her, okay, so Rhaenyra says to her, I have a job for you and it's the shittiest job on earth and you're going to hate me. But I need you to take all the kids. Yeah. And I need you to head out of town. And mm-hmm. I need you to go to, oh, I forget where she tells them to go. She eventually wants them to get to Pentos, which is where we meet Daenerys in Game of Thrones. So I think she said uh, Joffrey would be a ward under Lady Jane Aaron. Okay. In, uh, is that the Vale? I can't yes. Remember. Yes. I think it's in the, the Vale. vale. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she would, and then yes, the, the smaller children would be in Pentos with her and she'd take care of them. Yeah, there's nothing worse than this assignment, I feel like. But it's the most important one. It is the most important one. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I'm sorry you're stuck babysitting, but like this is some real shit going on here. Like I was almost murdered by evil twins in my bed last night. (laughs) You have to do this. And Raina just has typical teen energy where she's like, "Yeah, (sighs) mom, (laughs) I don't want to do this. No. <laughs> and then she says, Raina, I need you to be the mother to them that I cannot be. But Raina's yeah. not happy because Bela gets to stay because she is a dragon. And kick ass. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she mm-hmm. wants to too. Yeah. So now later we see a uh, black council, small council. And mm-hmm. Rhaenyra's advisors, they really want her to burn everything the fuck down. Yes. Like they are just like, you need, to, what are you doing? We can't wait any longer. Get the dragons in the sky. Let's start incinerating people who are team green. Let's do this. Rhaenyra says, if dragons start fighting dragons, we invite our own destruction. So again, we have like this heavy handed metaphor of assured mutual destruction. Mm -hmm. Mutual assured destruction. How does that work? What did you say? Mutual assured destruction. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I can't watch stuff. Like there was this show on Netflix that I really liked called Turning Point that was talking about the Cold War. Mm -hmm. And every time we start talking about nuclear weapons, I get such anxiety. I can't even, can't even watch. No, no. But that's what he's doing here, right? He's saying like, once the dragons are involved, it's over for everybody. Right. It's, it's nuclear. It's nuclear. Yeah. So there's this kind of like balance that needs to be kept here. Mm -hmm. And oddly enough, like only the women seem to know this. It's interesting. Um, there's two ways to look at it, right? I guess when you go nuclear, you can attack your enemy outright. In this mm-hmm. case, just attack the family, attack uh, yep. maybe you because if you build an army like Rainis, wait, was it Rainis? It's Rainis, right? Okay, sorry, I keep getting yep. mixed up with the names. Rainis suggested we need to have armies, not just dragons, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And um how much more costly is that? versus right just a couple of dragons right but then again a dragon can burn down a whole city yeah <laughs> so yeah. it's uh well and you kind of see uncle husband's frustration with rainies for you know you were literally standing in front of Aegon with on a dragon mm-hmm. you could have mm-hmm. just went like a little ugh, like the dragon could have just ugh, coughed right and he would have burst into flames and been dead. yeah yeah i don't know so um all right So she calls, oh, so now at this point, some of her advisors are like, you know what? This is getting dangerous. Why don't you go hide and leave the (laughs) war to us? Mm -hmm. And she's like, are you saying that you're going to conduct a war in my absence? Like, that's (laughs) treason. And you're lucky that it didn't go any further. Mm -hmm. So she walks off and Rainy says, you would be, you would do well to remember this queen wears the crown of my grandsire which I'm going to start calling grandparents that now. Um, <laughs> Jaharis, the conciliator. Yes. The wisest of kings whose reign outlasted everyone else's, even Aegon the Conqueror's. Yeah. Boom, mic drop. <laughs> so, you know, she's just making the point that peace and somebody who's rational and think strategically Mm -hmm. and works towards peace is always going to do better than the maniac with the crown on who's screaming, kill everybody. Right. So who was Aegon the Conqueror? Was he like a grandparent? Yes. Cause Aegon later says he was named for his grandsire. Right. So Aegon was the first, he was the one that conquered everything. He, he was the, the conqueror. Okay. So he's in his, he's in his, like I would say downline. But not mm-hmm. a direct descent. Well, a direct descendant, but far down the line. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. 
so now we get this really short scene with Rainice heading over to see her husband, the sea Yeah. And they have a quick chat about him naming Raina his heir. Now this is this is a little confusing to me because Joffrey is his heir. Yes. Because yes. Joffrey is set to marry Raina, correct? No. No, no, I know what it is. Okay. Joffrey is supposedly Lenor's son. But he's Correct. not. He's but not. he's not. Yes. Clearly. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he would be the heir to uh, what do you call it? The sea snake throne? Um the Lord of the Tides. Thank you. That was Lord the title. The mm -hmm. You don't like Sea Snake Throne? What would that be like? <laughs> <laughs> um so he, for some reason, like he's not happy with Joffrey as the choice. And Rhaenys is kind of getting him to name Raina mm -hmm. Lord of the Ties. And he's like, what are you talking about? Like, and Rhaenys is like, you know why, you know why Joffrey <laughs> can't be the heir. You know why? And he blows her off and says, we'll decide later. And she gets emotional thinking of something happening to Corliss. Like she's. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't understand why we're having this air conversation at the same time. This is why I think Lenor may appear. Because don't forget, mm -hmm. he's not dead. Hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I, I, who knows? The, the, the way he, they... would, he would be the heir, correct? Uh, yes, he would be the heir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, because the daughter's dead. She burned herself by dragon. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it would be Lenor. But, you know, we're seeing sea smoke. Being all upset. You know what Sea Smoke reminds me of? <laughs> uh, you're watching 90 Day UK, right? Yes. He's like Sprite. He's like Sprite. <laughs> Sprite. If Sprite were a dragon, he would be Sea Smoke. He just wants to go to the city, okay? Yes. He just wants to do He's his thing. He's just a queen out there amongst the clouds. <laughs> just bitches. He's bored. <laughs> so, uh, now we're back at Dragonstone again, and <laughs> Raina's getting ready to leave. We have see this procession outside where they're, you know, getting all the kids around, and she she is gifted with some dragon eggs. And Rhaenyra says, for as precious as the two baby dragons I'm sending with you are, and oh right, and my children, these eggs are even more fragile. So I read that George Martin confirmed that they're Dro Drogon? Is that how you say his name? Yeah. Yes. Hold on. Yes. That, those name. are the, those are Daenerys's Yeah. Uh, I eggs. have their names. I just can't remember them. Okay. So episode three director Gita Patel confirms that the three dragon eggs Rhaenyra gave to Reyna are Daenerys's dragons. Drogon, mm -hmm. Rhaegal, and Viserion. Mm -hmm. Sounds kind of yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. Now in the books, I guess it's different how she gets the eggs. I somebody steals them and they end up in Pentos and also this is like two hundred years prior yeah. so and I I look because I looked this up and it it doesn't seem like the eggs usually last that long so I'm I'm not sure yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure so Whatever. the math ain't math then is what it, you're saying yeah. it's all right it's all right <laughs> so uh, Rhaenyra says look if all shit if everything goes to shit here. Mm -hmm. you need to literally restart humanity with the with the dragon <laughs> eggs and my children mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh the future's up to you and Rhaenyra kisses her kids goodbye and they leave and that's where we're leaving team black for now mm -hmm. okay now we're gonna scoot over to team green see this this method is okay yeah. right yeah. yeah okay all right <laughs> so at team green the King's Guard, I think that's are they the King's Guard? Is that what you call them collectively? They're not yellow coats. The King's Guard are the knights that surround the king, right? Isn't it the King's Knights Guard. Guard? Is it the Knights Watch? Knights No, Knights Watch is the North. Oh. <sighs> King's Guard? Oh my god. Okay, let's say King's, King's Guard. Guard. <laughs> anyway, they're a bunch of fuckboys led by the ultimate fuckboy hand, Kristen Cole. Yes. He's fuckboy hand. Okay. Yeah. Kristen Cole's late to the council. He shows up. He's all like, you know, in despair. And there's some talk of Sir Eric and not everyone is happy at the table about that mm -hmm. whole thing, including Alicent. She's mm -hmm. like, well, there's certainly going to be a fucking war now, idiot. Yeah. And Eamon tells them that House Bracken attacked the Blackwoods and destroyed them. But most of them are dead because 
Aegon is like, he's all bloodlusty and he's like, yes, yes, we're winning. <laughs> and Aemon's like, dude, everybody's dead. This is not much of a victory. Like you good. have maybe 10 people are alive over there. Yeah. And they wiped out pretty much all of our army. And Aegon is just like, this is great. I want to destroy everything. So <laughs> someone says, and I wasn't sure, I think it was the maester, says we need to send a raven to Lord Tully. Yes. We need to tell him to get this shit under control. These are his houses. This is his area. Mm -hmm. And they start disagreeing about this and they're fighting. And Alicent is like, boys, boys, shut up. Yeah. Where's the decorum that we used to have under my dad? Mm -hmm. I know you're led by hand fuck boy here. Yeah. But, you know, we need to, to get under control. So Kristen Cole says the Riverlands are the key to the war. And Heron Hall is the key to the Riverlands. So he's like, mm -hmm. here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ride out. On the way, I'm going to be grabbing some armies to join me. So it's going right. to be like a flash mob situation. And I'll do it real quick. And uh, Allison's like, okay, okay, dude, you're going to die. But sounds great. Sounds like a great plan. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't. Okay. So what do you make of Allison and Sir Kristen Cole now? Because... I can't read her, but she seems to be taking a lot of passive aggressive digs at him. She's still sexually into him, mm. but she's also disgusted by him. <laughs> I can relate to this. Mm -hmm. Me in my 20s, I can relate to that. Yeah. <laughs> but she she just seems, I don't know if she, like, I don't know if her him usurping her father's position as hand mm. mm -hmm. is something that is really I don't know I don't know oh she's bothered by it I I think she's I think she's really concerned about where things are heading because she knows he's a hothead she knows he wants to take bold action and she's very concerned <laughs> yeah as she should be mm -hmm. so Aegon's like well why don't you take Aemond and Vagar with you and Kristen Cole's like, no, Vagar needs to stay and guard the city. So there yeah. is something going on here. Maybe, you know, we could talk this out a little bit with Aemond and Aegon. Because I don't remember much of their dynamic from season one. Mm -hmm. Is Aemond is younger, correct? I'm assuming. Yes. Does Do they hate each other? Are they friends? Like, what is going on there? Because there seems to be mm -hmm. beyond the usual dick measuring contest of brothers there seems to be something else happening, bubbling below the surface. I think Aegon never wanted to be king, and Aemond has more aspirations towards being king okay. than Aegon. But because he's the older one, he's the king. And I think that's that's the conflict there. But I feel like, like why would Sir Kristen Cole say no? Like, Aemond can't come, Vagar has to say. Like, is Aemond universally disrespected as some kind of wimp um because that's what i was feeling but i'm not sure because he's actually a badass he's got maybe, the biggest fucking dragon yeah maybe it's too much of a risk maybe they're concerned of running into another dragon and and losing yeah aemon that, that could be what it that could be it and he is the next in line as well Oh, that's true. Vagar, mm -hmm. can we talk about Vagar for a second? Mm -hmm. Vagar is fucking impressive. <laughs> when you see that dress, it's like, so you know I'm obsessed with whales, and I'm really obsessed with blue whales. Like, I just can't watch enough drone footage of blue whales on Instagram. And mm -hmm. when I see Vagar, it's, it, like, tickles that same thing mm -hmm. inside me where I'm seeing just this enormous body moving across the sky it's like yeah. it's really crazy and Beleriand was bigger yes even than Vagar and that's and the skull that's in the sept right right yeah mm -hmm. see I need to see I need drone footage of Balon flying around I feel like we're going to get a prequel to this eventually oh, and God, we'll I see that so. I think I so. so I think so I really hope so Hey everyone, stay tuned. Little Miss Recap will be right back after these words. All right, so um, guys, I, I just want to jump in because we were talking about, was it Dunk and Egg? Dunk and Egg, yeah. Dunk that was egg, yeah. Um, 
a night for the seven kingdoms i think yeah so mm -hmm. axel a friend of the pod make be enthusiast with me <laughs> um he re he reached out to me said i've been listening to your pod and you had two questions i can answer for you Duncan Egg is actually more of a comedic show and series of short stories. So it's not really going to have much of a connection to the way people think it's going to really be like mm -hmm. kind of fun and interesting. Mm -hmm. Egg is Aegon, who is Daenerys's great grandfather. Yeah. Okay. He says also Westeros is not on Earth. Okay. Well, no. Yeah. <laughs> it's a different planet commonly called Planetos. <laughs> in a song of ice and fire fan okay and george martin has george rr R. martin has confirmed this so thank okay. you axel thank you. <laughs> okay. all right by the way i will be chatting this episode with him over on daily dvr so if you guys are interested to hear uh me be lost in a conversation with two people who know what they're talking about <laughs> you know head on over there okay. so now we meet a huge douchebag Sir Gwaine Hightower. Mm, mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> First of all, this guy had some real Eric Stoltz energy, right? Mm -hmm, Do you know mm -hmm. who I'm talking about? That actor yeah. from the 80s? Yes. yes. And uh, he shows up. He's Allison's brother. And he shows up and he's going to be a big old pain in Christian Cole's ass. Yeah. And he's immediately like, wow, dude. He goes right up to Kristen Cole. Sir Kristen. Wow. You got a lucky break uh, taking my dad's job, especially as a <laughs> poor person. Yeah. Like this dude. Wow. He was a little racist, too. Oh, he's he's yeah. he's just the worst. Yeah. And he's like, guess what? I'm going to go with you. And Sir, Sir Kristen's like, no, mm -mm, I'm good. All full. <laughs> my my battalion is full here. And he's like, no, 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 no. I can make room. I can make room. Got one more. <laughs> one more. So then Allison is pretty much like. Bye, don't die, and starts to walk away. And uh, fuckboy hand is like, wait a second, I need a blessing from the queen. <laughs> and she gives him, was it her handkerchief? I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which is supposed to symbolize her blessings. Okay. Right. Now we have this really weird scene with Helena and Allison. So they're in yes. the nursery, the bedroom, something. And uh, yeah. Helena's talking about feeling grief. And she's like, this this was very upsetting. Because for me as a mother, if I saw my daughter talking like this about the death of her child, this would be like red flag. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Helena's like, I think I'm okay. I think I'm okay after mm. Jaharis died. Uh, you know, I, I shouldn't feel so sad about it. Because, you know, small folk, they lose their babies much more than those who are, you know, of, of higher ilk or whatever she says. Yeah. And Allison's like, Helena, you are entitled to your pain. Yeah. She says, the stranger comes for all of us, queen and commoner. Mm -hmm. And uh, Helena says, she there's like this weird pause and Helena turns to her and she goes, I forgive you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Allison is like, uh, for what? And she goes, I forgive you. So she's talking about Sir Kristen Cole, right? I don't know if it's specifically. That's why she's not. It, it, they're leaving it up to us to determine what exactly she's for. Because I think in part it's more, I'm, I forgive you for all this mess that you've created with with my grandfather. You know, usurping yeah. the throne, all that. Because she is a true victim. Uh, Helena yeah. is a true victim of all of this. And um, in the books, Helena is completely distraught, mind you. Like, yeah, totally, like, can't eat, can't sleep, nothing. So this is definitely a departure from the book, the, this mm -hmm. character, um, and how she tries to rationalize the death of her son. Um, but I think the forgiveness aspect might have to do more with just everything. Like, I forgive you for... <laughs> Mm -hmm. ruining my life <laughs> yeah pretty I much guess. pretty much yep so meanwhile uh Aegon's bros are getting him all geared up literally and figuratively to go to battle he's wearing Aegon the Conqueror, the conqueror's armor this mm -hmm. armor looks like it weighs nine thousand pounds oh yeah oh yeah and <laughs> Laris comes in and Laris plays this beautifully if this isn't some little finger shit I don't know yeah. what is He's like, uh, your grace. 
there's some rumors being spread around town. And one of them is that you're so brave and you're going to battle because, you know, you're a hero. And the other one is like, are you a mama's boy? Did mommy <laughs> send you to battle and want to usurp your throne? And this idiot like buys right into it, of course. Yeah. And he's like, oh, guess what? Uh, you're hired as master of whispers, master of whisperers, and I'm staying home tonight. Mm -hmm. not, go not going to battle anymore. So mm -hmm. he buys right into this. Oh, so, yeah. Real quick. I have a question for you. Do you think Allison sent him to do this work? Mm, that's a good question. I, I she wouldn't that. want him to go. Yeah, that's true. It's possible. And we know that he's doing Allison's bidding. Bidding, pretty much. I almost said bedding. <laughs> that's true yes yeah um it's possible yeah yeah because he won't listen to his mother he'll definitely listen to laris clearly right so his bros are like dude why don't you come out with us tonight we got this we got this nerd <laughs> virgin that we're trying to break in here why don't you come out with us and Aegon goes but you're sworn to chastity now and they're yeah. like, oh, yeah, yeah. And then they realize he's being serious. And they're like, um, yes, of course we are. <laughs> of course. So this is where Aegon is such a complex character to me. Yeah. Because, you know, he has this Joffrey type, mm -hmm. like, and again, this is probably an age thing. This is a teenager, right? Yeah. But he has this Joffrey type, like, how dare you insult me? I'm going to burn everything to the fucking ground. But then he also has this like, now, wait a minute, we have to stick to the rules and the traditions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's real. He's really complex for me. I can't put my finger on if he's good or evil. Yeah, it's uh, he is something. <laughs> it's it's uh, he, he I noticed that he keeps switching back and forth because after he says that he kind of like smirks a little bit, like he smiles yeah. a yeah. little bit and then they they got to party. So it's like they go out to party and let me tell you something. <laughs> looks like a good time. <laughs> so because he walks in, he's like, drinks for everybody on the crown. Everybody's yeah. like, yeah. But not before we meet a dude named Ulf. Ulf. Now is Ulf in the book? Yes. Okay. So Ulf yeah. Ulf is important then. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So we meet this dude named Ulf, and he's in a tavern. He appears to be a he is like fun Bobby from Friends. Like he walks in and everybody's like, oh. And he knows everybody's <laughs> names. He's kind of like cousin on the bear. Like he knows everybody's names. Right. He knows who had a baby. Oh, how's your new job? What's your wife up to? Like he's the mayor of this yeah. place. Mm -hmm. And he sits down and he's telling a group of his buddies that he is the bastard brother of Damon and Jaharis, King Jaharis. And they yes. doubt him because he doesn't have white. Hair. Oh, I'm sorry. Correct me. King but ba Balon, I think it was Balon. I think this was no. But who's Damon's? Uh, who's Rhaenyra's father? Viserys. It's not Jaehaerys. Viserys. 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 He's the brother Thank of Viserys. You. Yes, brother of yes. Viserys, brother of Damon. So mm -hmm. that would make him also brother of Rhaenys. Mm, yes. 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 And uh, they doubt him because he doesn't have the white hair, and he's like, "I'm a half sibling." Assholes! Mm -hmm. Like my hair's kind of white. <laughs> He's team black. He's like, my niece is the 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 real deal. Yeah. I'm behind her. Mm -hmm. Just then Aegon comes in. Aegon comes in, buys around for everyone. Mm -hmm. They're thrilled. Mm -hmm. Then he gets shit faced. Yeah. Takes this party to a brothel. <laughs> and he's like, he's walking through and he's drunk and he's playing a good drunk character. Like he's doing the the like the mm -hmm. loosey goosey. Like mm -hmm. I always say, when I have a couple drinks with me, I get very loosey goosey. Everything's mm -hmm. loose. Everything's relaxed. Everything's fun. <laughs> so he's walking through and he's like, I know exactly who you need to fuck. Let me find her. And he starts like pulling aside curtains. We get a full on blowjob. Oh, full on. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> so we get some fucking in the other window. And then we get to Amon. Yeah. So he pulls aside the curtain. And he, Aegon is looking for this woman that Amon is with because mm -hmm. this was Aegon's first. And she's. Right. I, I, shit, I don't have her name again, but she's a nurturer. Do you have her name? I don't. I keep forgetting to write her name down. We should look it up. Yeah, we should look this up. <laughs> Clearly, she's an important character. I don't want to just call her woman. 
Guys, we're back. We tried really hard, well, for five minutes, to find the name of the woman, because I just hate not knowing her name that right. Damon is with. But while we were on a break, you asked me about the blowjob. Yeah. I do think it was a prosthetic, 100%. Yeah. yeah. It did not look real to me. It did not. No. no. Thank God. Well, nice, I don't know. Nice try. It was, nice it was try. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was a lot for a Sunday night. Yeah. Like, <laughs> um. So... All right, so he finds Eamon here, and Eamon is in his fetal position, again, curled up against this beautiful woman, mm-hmm. and uh, he ridicules him, and mm-hmm. it's bad. And yeah. Aegon is like, you've come so far, and you still lie with your first, and he says, you know, you're Eamon the Fierce, but you're like an idiot. Like, it's bad. It's yeah. bad. Yeah. And Eamon he's just sitting there and he's like taking it, but he's like curled like in this almost like a fetal position, but you know, upright. Right. And he's, you, you have this menacing Aegon behind you, which if there's anything I can relate to, it's an older Sib terrorizing me right <laughs> behind me. <laughs> and, uh, Eamon eventually stands up and he's like, you could have her one horse as good as any other full mm-hmm. nudity. Mm-hmm. And he walks off. What did you think of that full nudity shot? Was that real? I feel so like I, it was. I listened to a, another podcast. How about dare this. you? <laughs> Someone mentioned it was a prosthetic. That it was most likely prosthetic. I'm but, assuming it was, but it looked real. And it was his idea, too. The actor's idea to do it. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to go to Heron Hall, and then we'll do the final scene. Okay. Okay. So, Heron Hall. Yes. Um, my man, Uncle Husband, <laughs> he's also got some bloodlust. And he flies to the castle, to Heron Hall. And mm-hmm. Heron Hall is in disrepair, to oh, yeah. say the least. Oh, yeah. And yes. uh, he's wandering around and he finds the uh, the Great Hall where some people are having dinner. And he just bursts open the door and he's like, I'm claiming Heron Hall. And <laughs> Simon says, apparently so. This felt very Monty Python-esque to Didn't me. Didn't it really? Didn't it? Didn't it? <laughs> it was yes. so good. This might have been my favorite part of the show. <laughs> just because he's got this big, creepy castle that's legendary. Mm-hmm. And he just bursts in. He's ready to fight. He's just He's ready to go. And it's just yeah. like... Eh, it's okay. You can take it. Fine. Yeah. Here, <laughs> it's yours. We surrender. We surrender. <laughs> so this is Sir Simon Strong, and he immediately yeah. bends the knee for Rhaenyra. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, some I'm calling her a witchy woman, some mm-hmm. Stevie Nicks looking woman with black hair, is wandering around in the background just looking at him. And I said to my husband, he's either going to bang her or she's a ghost. We don't know what's happening. So... <laughs> They invite Damon for dinner, but he's not eating because he's like, I'm not being poisoned. I'm not stupid. I know how this goes. <laughs> They're like, Sir Simon's like, what are you not getting here, dude? We're literally <laughs> giving you the castle. We yeah. don't care anymore. We're done. We're waiting for somebody to come and take this off our hands. <laughs> and so they talk about Laris, and Sir Simon says he's a scourge upon our family, and he totally killed his father and his brother. Like, how could we- you can't mm-hmm. even light a fire here in the middle of the summer? He's gone, but this <laughs> house just burned to the ground for no reason. Right. And uh, he essentially, and I, I made a note here. Essentially, he calls it. He calls Heron Hall moist. <laughs> What a great character. This one, this was just my, I think he's my favorite. Oh, yeah. He's pretty good. So he calls Damon your prince and Damon corrects him to your grace. Yeah. Okay. What does this mean? Please tell me. Oh God. <laughs> like does your great, like, so is he saying, call me the king? Yes. Yes. That's essentially the happy. difference. I'm not happy. He's power hungry. <laughs> That's that's the the difference here as well. That that's what I gathered from it because typically when you say your grace, it's the ultimate person in power. Yeah. So mm-hmm. is he gonna try to battle her for the throne? Um I don't I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know either. Because Sir Simon says, Oh, I'm sorry, I just thought as king consort and and he just says, 
stop making assumptions. You know what they say. When you assume, you make an ass out of you and me, like you did that kind of thing. Damon is is definitely a very uh, complex character as well. He He's, as we're going to see in Heron Hall and, you know, as we mm-hmm. go on. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So Damon says, look, we need to get Heron Hall repaired. Like mm-hmm. we need to do this. And Sir Simon says, well, something's happened. The Bracken and the Blackwood they just, you know, for, for years going back, it was sin against sin against sin against sin. Like, we can't even remember what happened. Mm-hmm. And Lord Tully can't even seal his bowels, let alone broker peace between these two people. Like, I don't know what's going to happen here. And Damon's like, we need to get Lord Tully. You need to respect your elder, even if he has to poop in his pants or whatever you're <laughs> implying. And we need to talk because he's like, I, I'm going to take the throne. And Sir Simon's like, you're taking the throne. Yeah, it's a big chair full made of swords, he goes. <laughs> I love him. I love him. Okay. Let's go to the road to war over uh, with fuckboy hand, Sir Christopher. Oh, yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. So Sir Gwen is being a dick bag, and he doesn't want to sleep on the ground with the troops. He wants to sleep in an inn. And they're mm-hmm. having this fight out in a big open field, and Sir Kristen Cole's spidey sense starts to tingle, and he looks up, and there's Bela on her dragon. That was a little confusing for me, that scene. I guess visually, I'm like, that's just the sun. I'm not sure right. what you're seeing. He like saw <laughs> something, but we didn't see it. We didn't see it. Yeah, no. which was weird. Like, if they showed us a shadow or something, do you something. know what I mean? Something, yeah, yeah. yeah. It might have just been that um, they were out in an open field and he just felt very exposed. Exposed, yeah. Mm-hmm. So they barely outrun Bela mm-hmm. and her uh, inclination to incinerate them. Mm-hmm. And they get in the woods and Sir Gwaine is like, oh, God, I owe you one, buddy. Jesus Christ, I almost died back there. You <laughs> saved my life. So Bela reports back. At the same time, Rhaenyra has decided to read Allison's message and mm-hmm. we can't really see what it says, but right. we see like some nice words. So we, we garner that it's, you know, it's nice. Yeah. So when her counsel gets all bloodlusty again, she's able to say to them, like, I've heard you. This is a real therapy speak. I've heard mm-hmm. you. I'm going to take in what you've said. I'm going to think about it <laughs> and then I'll come back. I'm going to sleep on it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So um, now Rhaenyra decides to visit Masaria. Is that her name? Yeah. Yes. The, the Whisperer woman. Yes. The White Worm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And she says, I need to get a face-to-face with Alicent. This is my new decision. Mm-hmm. And Masaria is like, oh, do you want to kill her outright, hold her hostage, pluck her fingernails off one by one? How are we doing this? <laughs> And she's like, no, 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 no. I just want to talk to her. And, and White Worm's like, uh, that could be harder, actually. <laughs> yes. Killing her is probably going to be easier. <laughs> so uh, meanwhile, cut back to Damon at Heron Hall, and he has a nightmare. And this nightmare is wild. First yeah. of all, first of all, when you are in a dark castle and there is a <laughs> grrr, noise at your door, don't answer it. Just <laughs> don't it answer alone. it. Leave it alone. Stay in your room. (laughs) Stay in your room. Maybe just burn the whole castle to the ground and escape. (laughs) So he gets up and he walks towards a creepy child humming a song near a fire. Pro tip number two. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Don't do that. No. (laughs) And it's a young Rhaenyra and she is sewing Jaehaerys' head back onto his body. Yeah. And she says, you're always coming and going, aren't you? And I always have to clean up afterwards. Mm-hmm. That was. I wonder if the dream is coming from Heron Hall itself or mm. this other this witchy woman character, which um, they didn't say her name, but her name is Alice Rivers. Oh, and Sounds she is of she is <laughs> she is of consequence to the storyline. Okay. Alice Rivers giving away okay. it too much, mm-hmm. but um, he may have just a lot of guilt. Um, it's definitely a guilt dream yeah yeah and it's a waking weird I'm not sure if it's a dream or a vision like he's Mm -hmm. experiencing because Hall is 
the lore is that it is haunted. And, and mm. um, so he's experiencing this scene and clearly it kind of gives away that, you know, he did order to kill Jaharis. This, mm -hmm. this kind of tells you, you know, um, she's always cleaning up his messes and, and it's interesting though, that it was the young version of her mm -hmm. and not the current. It's like, that's the version of her that he fell in love with. Yeah. Which is weird for us. <laughs> it's weird for a 21st century audience, but you know, I get it. Yeah. Um, I just thought that was interesting, like to cast the child in that role. Mm -hmm. um, maybe just showing her innocence, like, you know, just exemplifying that Rhaenyra is an innocent victim in all of this. Yeah. I don't know. It was it was interesting. Yeah. So then we cut to him being out by a tree, kind of like, did you ever watch the Smurfs when you were a kid? Yes. This has a Gargamel's, Gargamel's Castle feel to it. Like, I just feel like we're in Gargamel's <laughs> Castle, which is also where Robin Brown lives. Um, but they have they have like a tree outside, and he's by the tree now. Suddenly, he didn't walk there; he's just there. Uh, witchy woman is in the background, going, "You will die in this place." Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> Spoiler alert! Yeah, that's never good. Never good. Okay, so let's talk about this final scene. Yeah. Rhaenyra is being smuggled into King's Landing and she's dressed as a nun. And I kept screaming the entire time, why don't you put your fucking head down? Because she's like yeah. walking around like this, like, hey, everybody. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> I'm like, why, why are we not trying to at least put our head down here and look disinterested <laughs> and not engaging with people? <laughs> but they find Alicent in the sept and Rhaenyra sits next to her. Okay. Yeah. So at first, it's kind of like, Sit down and shut up, or I'm gonna fucking kill you. And then she's like, I've started this all wrong. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll do wrong star here. Wrong star. I whipped out the knife too early. And uh Rhaenyra says, Alicent, we watched the tourney together when we were kids. And even mm -hmm. then we knew that men were assholes. Like we knew mm -hmm. this was a problem. And Rhaenyra's yeah. uh Rhaenys believes that you want to avert this shit. And Alicent goes, Oh, so you've come to surrender? And yeah. Rhaenyra's like, no, I didn't come to surrender. I'm yeah. trying to find a piece, a path to peace, some some kind of terms we can come to, some middle ground mm -hmm. that we could lay. And Alicent says, it's too late. You've gone yeah. too far. Clearly referring to Jaehaerys' <laughs> beheading. Right. And they both agree now that they didn't order the deaths of each other's children. Like, uh, Rhaenyra says that that trespass was not mine. And then Alicent says something like, you know, this of of the same sentiment about yeah. Damon and Luke. Now we get to the usurping, which is everybody's favorite word. And Alicent swears that the king changed his mind. And she truly like wholeheartedly believes this. She's like, I may have been unkind at times, but I've not I'm not a liar. And right. she's right. Like she's not. Mm -hmm. As I'm rewatching season one, I am seeing how honest and true Alicent has been to Rhaenyra, like in those early episodes. Mm -hmm. So Rhaenyra says, he had affirmed my right to the throne and he held to it steadfastly for years. Like yeah. why at the last hour would he suddenly change his mind? And this is where I'm screaming, ask her what he said. Ask her what he <laughs> said. Because I just needed them to have this conversation. They they had a whole ceremony, as as, as you recall, in the first season, like yeah. for her to be yeah. the next in line, the throne. Yeah, and he he stood by that the mm -hmm. entire time, mm -hmm. against immense pressure to name Aegon the heir. Right. So Allison says, "Okay, well, here's what happened. He was weary. It was hard to understand, but he spoke Aegon's name." And he called them the prince that was promised. And Rhaenyra almost dies. <laughs> and she's like, wait, what? Say that again? Say that again? And did he use those words? And Allison's like, yeah. And Rhaenyra yeah. says, you idiot. Who was talking about the Song of Ice and Fire, which is Aegon the Conqueror's story. <laughs> Allison is stunned. Right. And she, she just sits there for a minute and you just see it like sinking in and I then made a she, terrible mistake and she doubles 
<laughs> That's what's happening. <laughs> but then she doubles down and she's like, there's been no mistake. <laughs> and then she says, it's too late. Fuck hand or fuck boy hand is heading off to war. Eamon, she she does say something about Eamon. She goes, Eamon, you know what Eamon is. I don't know what that means. Was she like, Eamon's kind of an idiot or bloodlusty? <laughs> I don't know what she means there. But she says it's too late and then she leaves. Yeah. And that's where we leave the episode. What would you think of that conversation? <sighs> hmm. So I thought, so, okay. So this this scene was I guess it was very satisfying to watch because you finally get to the point where she realizes she made a huge mistake with this <laughs> but it I, had like I mean, a, a tiger king like joe exotic <laughs> like i'm never gonna financially recover from this, from this. <laughs> <laughs> and it but i think that we also tend to forget that the greens have always been plotting to re- to usurp the throne yes um no matter what this it, was kind of like like the auto cherry on high top. tower and the council yeah. were auto Allison high wasn't i mean <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> but i'm so, not opposed but, to it but you know <laughs> so i think that this favored them greatly it was like a cherry on top you know mm-hmm. just to really mm-hmm. take the throne but it wasn't ultimately I think this was going to happen no matter what. Um, Rhaenyra may have been even killed um, yeah. by the high towers, you know. Um, but it was satisfying to watch this scene, um, seeing their dynamic together, um, the facial expressions. Um, just uh, and can I just say, like Emma Darcy is gorgeous. Oh my god, the face! It's just the facial expressions, everything, just. Wow. <laughs> I know. They're like somebody who's 40 that looks 20. Yes. 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 Yep. And very elven like, like very like elvish, yep. like Lord of the Rings. And it's interesting too. Like, it's only been 18 months since season one, right? Yeah. But Allison somehow looks so much more mature now. Like when yeah. you see her versus Allison in season one, she's yeah. she looks like a grown woman now. Yeah. As opposed to season one, but it hasn't been that much time. So I don't know if they're doing that through makeup or how they're doing it, but maybe just the styling, like she's wearing her hair in a more regal way. (laughs) She's real fucking stressed. She doesn't have crisis hair yet. If we see her, if she shows up with like bangs cut and like (laughs) purple hair, we'll be like, "Mm -hmm, mm mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We see you, girl. We see you. No, I agree. Emma Darcy, stunning. Allison stunning. It was yeah. it was such a good scene. I yeah. really enjoyed it. I'm glad that they didn't just tease us, like I said. And you know what's really interesting is when we talk about the parallels of this show to the Cold War, right? And mm-hmm. like nuclear annihilation. Mm-hmm. I can't help but think about my man JFK. <laughs> okay? Because I don't know how much you know about the Cuban Missile Crisis, but I was way into this. Yeah. And JFK's advisors during the the Cuban Missile Crisis were all saying to him to blow up the sub. Blow Mm -hmm. it up. This is it. You have to take out Khrushchev before he does something to us. Like, and we're coming off of the Eisenhower administration, you know, an administration, a president who really listened to his generals and his advisors. And we are going to Kennedy, who's like, I'm not necessarily going to listen to you guys. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do what I think is right. And it was really interesting to see that happen here. Like Rhaenyra, if she listened to her generals, for lack of a better term, they'd be at war right now. Right. But like she's taking down the temperature. And that's kind of what Kennedy did. Actually, it was Bobby Kennedy who did it, who's my real heartthrob. Bobby (laughs) Kennedy's in the background like, dude, dude, let me back channel a little bit. And he's the one who actually back channeled with Russia and solved the Cuban Missile Crisis. But... Mm -hmm. The point is they didn't listen to the people at the table, the experts in the room saying we need to we need to take this sub out, which would have resulted in World War Three, probably. Yeah. But I feel like Allison is also that voice. I feel like Allison doesn't necessarily want to listen, but she's not the queen. 
Aegon right. is the king and he's going to fucking listen to the generals because he's immature and, you know, 14. The men are in charge in King's Landing. Yeah, yeah. and the women are in charge in Dragonstone. in Dragonstone, even though the men there are trying to take over. <laughs> right, and the man who thought he was in charge of Dragonstone had to fuck off and leave mm -hmm. and go claim another place for himself because he had to be reminded he was not in charge. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting to see these power dynamics play out and the parallels of the Cold War, because it is very similar and it is a dystopian tale of what will happen if, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, yeah. we did start our conversation today off camera talking about the, the political anxieties of the world, and here we are finishing <laughs> it that way. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, everybody's going to die in nuclear annihilation. Oh, What's coming up next week? <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh so overall, goodness. where where do you think we go from here? What's going to happen? Give me your predictions. Oh, full on war. <laughs> full on war. Full on war. So do you think we get two more seasons of this or this is it? Like, do we get one more after this? I really wonder where they're ending House of the Dragon because there's so much that happens after all this. Okay. Um, but it's a lot of like, this person takes the throne and then this person takes the throne. So I don't think we're going to go that far, like, mm -hmm, how, mm -hmm. but, but quite a bit ha happens and spoiler alert. Okay. Jump ahead. Lot, if you don't want to hear <laughs> a lot of people die. <laughs> Important. <characters. laughs> so there's like no cast left. <laughs> yeah, and now like, House of the Dragon season three starring <laughs> hand fuck boy. The only one still alive. <laughs> <laughs> you Basically. just have this whole you have this whole season with sir Kristen cole just trying to like i don't know figure out his life <laughs> yeah that sounds good so sounds i do good. wonder where they're gonna end the show mm -hmm. um but i guess we'll see we'll see because it's it is different from the book it is it is yeah. quite different mm -hmm. Looking at it from a narrative structure, if the, mm -hmm. if the, let's just say, and I don't know this because I haven't read the books. So mm -hmm. let's just say the culminating action, the peak of the action is the war between the dragons. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would think season one laid the foundation. Season two will be the rising action and, and the climax and season three will be the down action. So the fallout. Yeah. That's what mm -hmm. I'm thinking. Yeah. Narratively, that makes sense to me that you would have yeah. at the end of the season, which is only eight episodes. We're going to be halfway through the season next week. You're going to yeah. have the war with the dragons. And then season three picks up from that and shows us the resulting. I have a out. pretty I have an inkling of what's going to happen <laughs> in the yeah. last these this season at the end of the season. Yeah, I think maybe many of, many of us have a pretty good idea of what's going to happen. Yeah. And then um, season three might deal with the fault. Like I do think mm -hmm. there needs to be a season three. There will be. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure there will but be. But I don't know if it goes beyond that. That's the big question. I don't see it. I don't I see mean, it. I mean, you know, HBO's over there like, please, God, please just give us a season <laughs> four. We'll make it anything. <laughs> <laughs> it could be it could be it could be called sea smokes um anxious energy and it's all just about sea smoke flying around in the sky going wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> so what i think is going to happen is they'll end it after season three then we're going to get hopefully a prequel to all this that'd be like, great of Aegon the conqueror and hopefully by then which is like Three years from now, probably, <laughs> maybe Winds of Winter will be published finally. The next. <laughs> if, if, I'm afraid he's going to die with that now finished. You know it's going to happen. A lot of people suspect, since it's over a thousand pages long, that it would pretty much finish the story. And then mm -hmm. the last, the seventh book is kind. Maybe he has a plan for that last mm -hmm. book, mm -hmm. but it won't be as long as, you know this yeah. upcoming one that we've been waiting for. I would <laughs> love to also see the story. And I've said this last time, the story of the Mad King. I need to see that. Yes. I want to see that. I think that'd yeah. be a great idea. This world is so diverse and rich. Like he can really give us any characters. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be interesting. All right, my friend, thank you so much for joining me. <laughs> thank you for having I, me. I know I did nothing to calm your anxiety. Now I've just made you think <laughs> of nuclear war. <laughs> 
Uh, guys, if you haven't already, check out our Patreon, Supercast or Apple subscriptions, where we're doing some murder shows. We're doing Sister Wives. We're doing My So-Called Life. We're doing a bunch of stuff over there. So you could support the show that way or, you know, just leave us a five-star review. I mean, I saw it. you just posted The Perfect Wife and I, yeah. I'm yeah. going to listen to that right after. Yeah. Did you watch it? <laughs> yes. Did you watch it? It was yeah. wild. It was crazy. It yeah. was crazy. I, I felt it. like the docu-series <laughs> could have been, like the whole thing could have been an hour and a half. Yeah. I don't think we needed three hours. I don't think so. Yeah, I agree. But it was great. It was a good story. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I agree. All right, guys. Thank you so much. And we'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs>